Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a Resident Evil clone in Unity and welcome to episode 16. In this tutorial we are going to focus a little bit more on what we dealt with last time and we're going to allow our game to open up our menu. Don't forget, click subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and everything else on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So. Up to now we have kind of half of the menu done and I think my intent from here is to kind of work with the menu as and when we need it rather than build all of the menu. I kind of feel if we just focus on the menu it won't get specifically boring but it's more kind of you know we build something and then don't use it for a while we may as well build it as we need it. So how do we get from our game into our menu? Well there's a couple of things that we have to do. So if we go down here to where our canvas is, currently we do have a fade in. Remember we made that to fade into our game, but we're going to have another type of fading. So we're going to fade out, um, which is basically going to be a quicker fade out and it's going to fade into our menu. Now there are a couple of things that we'll have to deal with here because when we look at this, we can see that we have multiple different objects for our menu. We need to group these together. So. If we start with our inventory background, right click, create empty, and then I'm going to uncouple that and just place it below fade in. I'm going to rename this to just inventory. And then I'm going to drag and drop each of those objects into inventory. So now we can actually turn the inventory off completely. And if we press play, we should see our game as always. <clears throat> So our fade screen is currently set as off, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset that back on to give us a bit more of that original look of how we had it so it fades into the game. So next thing we have to do is we have to set up or rather check that a key is set up correctly in our game. If we go to edit, and we've not really explored much of this section just yet, but you'll notice down here we have uh, things like project settings, preferences, grid and snap settings. Uh, if we go to project settings, and if we go to input manager, we can see all of this. And remember, we've dealt with this before because we pressed the S key. Um, I can't quite remember what that was for, to be honest. It's been quite a while. Um, but either way, this is what we need now, the cancel. So we need to make sure that it is mapped to the key that you want it to be. So in this case, it is called cancel. And the positive button is escape. So the escape key on the keyboard. We need to keep that in mind. The way this is going to work is there's going to be a script which monitors whether we press the escape key or not. And if we do, then it functions uh, as a little kind of sequence and then serves up our menu to us. So we're also going to have a little sound effect for our menu. So let's also bring in that. Uh, let's go to audio, effects. And I'm going to drag and drop these two audio files, which you can get on my website. As always, head over there, downloads and assets, Resident Evil tutorial number 16. We have a menu open sound and a menu close sound. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to add uh, probably in the environment section um, an extra object which is going to be for audio. Or should, should we add it somewhere else? So I'm thinking because we have down here, we have the overworld ambience, should we really have it in the character section? Because it's going to be related to the character. I think we will actually. So in the character section, let's right click create empty and then uncouple that empty game object and let's rename this to menu control which is going to be for our inventory but it's also going to be used for multiple different menus i.e uh, when we want to go back to the, the main menu or something like that and um, so on here now i'm going to right click create empty and i'm going to have inv open which is short for inventory open hold control press d to duplicate and in close and both of those sound effects just drag and drop onto there oops let's try that again there we go and once more on the open and let's untick play on awake on both of those and make sure that loop is not ticked because we only want this to play once and we only want it to play when we tell it to play so the next thing we're going to do is we are going to go here turn our inventory off once again and we're going to set up a quick uh, fade out. So this is basically going to go from completely see-through to completely black in about half a second. 
That gives us a chance to play our sound effect and bring up our inventory screen. So to do that, let's go to game object. Let's go to UI and let's go to raw image. And let's stretch this raw image using the anchor here. And zero, 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 zero. And color is going to be completely black, but we also want to set the alpha as zero. Uh, like I say, we want it to be completely see-through, so we're going to use that. So let's now change the name of raw image to INV, again, inventory. Inventory, fade in. So we're fading into the inventory. Even though we're fading out of the game, we're actually going to the inventory with this. So what I would like to do, with this uh, particular animation is it's going to span a course of um, probably half a second. So a quarter of a second is going to fade to black and then another quarter of a second to fade back into uh, completely see-through, transparent. And during that time, we will set our menu on. So it will be completely seamless. So let's now set the animation for that. So let's click on animations, click into UI and click on animation and make sure we do have the object selected obviously uh, let's click on create and we'll call this one inv fade so let's press the record button and let's set our first keyframe so this is only ever going to be dealt with using color so let's click on the color and let's just move that around and set the alpha back to zero to set our first keyframe so we're working in 60 frames a second as always um, so we need to go a quarter of a second, which is going to be 15 frames. So at frame 15, we need the color to be completely black, which is all good. And that means at frame 30, we need it to be completely see-through again, so we can obviously see our menu. Now, what we'll end up doing is a sequence of events. So we just have to make sure that the timing of the sequence works correctly. So let's stop. That recording let's go back to our project window click on the inventory fade and untick loop time we only want it to play once and again only when we tell it to so now we have all the items that we need in our scene we now need to write that script that allows us to get to our menu so let's go to our scripts folder and let's go to in fact let's create a new folder so right click create folder and ui and in here, let's right click, create C sharp script, inventory, control. And let's open that up in Visual Studio. So I've mentioned a few times so far, we are going to do a sequence of events. That sequence is going to be monitoring when we press escape. So we've pressed escape. It will immediately play the audio to get into our menu and it will immediately play the animation of that fading. After a quarter of a second, it will turn on our menu, obviously while that animation is still playing. So as when it's completely black and we can't see anything on our screen, just for that split moment, it will turn the menu on and that is how it becomes seamless. So when it fades over the next quarter of a second, we will instantly see our inventory. So it's kind of cool how it all works, but we just have to make sure that everything we do is in the correct order, otherwise things may go a little astray. So how do we do this? Well, there are a few things that we need to get in place first. We do need a couple of variables. So we're going to need uh, the inventory, we're going to need the fading, and we're also going to need the audio. So first things first, let's set those up. So public game object inventory screen next public and game object inventory fade and finally public audio source and this one will be inventory open now we are eventually going to use uh, some more variables on this when we get around to closing the inventory. But as long as we get this first sequence in place, that's all we really need for now. So this is all going to be done inside the update method because we need it to constantly monitor whether we are uh, going to press our escape key. So let's get rid of the annotations and void start. Now, the if statement we're going to need is detecting whether you're pressing that 
cancel button. Remember the name of it was called cancel? That's important at this point. If you've renamed it something different, make sure you name it the same in this script. So if, and in brackets, input dot get button, and in brackets and quotes, the name, which was cancel. Again, if you've named it something different, just name it there. And then two close brackets and open curly bracket. So at this point, we are basically saying, we've pressed cancel, what shall we do next? Well, we can then say inventory open dot play, open oh, close bracket, semicolon. Now, because we're going dealing with some time here, we need to have a coroutine. Um, so basically the coroutine is going to allow us to wait for a quarter of a second before turning on the uh, inventory screen and then another quarter of a second before turning off that fading. So before we go any further, let's create that coroutine. So let's type down here, I enumerator, and we can call this anything we want, but we should probably name it something relevant to what we're doing here. So this is going to be inv open, open close bracket and open curly bracket. So as soon as we press that cancel button, we need to turn on both of those objects, which is going to be the sound and the fade. So let's also place that here. So inventory fade dot set active. True. Now we may modify this a little later on. It, again, it depends how we actually deal with this. We may change uh, how it actually works, but for all intents and purposes, this way is just fine for now. After we've set those two on, we do need to start that coroutine. So we type start coroutine and in brackets, the name of the coroutine we've just created below. In this case, it is inv open, open close bracket, close bracket, semicolon. So next thing we need to do is go down here. So we've activated our sound, we've activated our fading. That means we have to wait a quarter of a second. So yield, return new, wait for seconds, and in brackets, 0.25F, because that is one quarter of a second. So we're waiting for a quarter of a second, obviously the F because it's a float. After that, we turn our inventory screen on. So inventory screen dot set active, true. And at this point, the screen is completely black because according to our animation, at quarter of a second, it is 255 on the transparency, so completely black. So it comes on seamlessly. The animation then carries on for another quarter of a second, and then we need to turn it off after that so we can then interact with our menu. So yield, return new, wait for seconds, another quarter of a second, so 0.25F. At that point, we turn inventory fade off. Oops, not inventory screen. Inventory fade dot set active false semicolon and save. So it's a very simple script right now, uh, but it is not going to be entirely useful uh, because we have to remember that even if our menu is open, we can still press that cancel button. We obviously need to have some logic in there to say if it's already open or already starting to open, don't do anything. Obviously, when we get around to closing the menu, that is when we'll also apply some extra logic. So let's go back into our uh, game view for now and let's apply everything we've done. So menu control, let's drag and drop our inventory control onto there and let's apply those three variables. So in open is there, inventory fade is that, and inventory is that. So let's save our project and press play. And let's see if this functions. Okay, so we can still move. There we go. So I don't know whether you noticed there, but it did buzz a little bit. That means, see, it's not quite working. So that is why we do need the logic. So what we're going to do is I'm quickly going to apply um, another 
variable here with a boolean so we can say we're already trying to open it so as it doesn't glitch out like that um, and then from the next tutorial we'll probably add some more to it so for now let's just make sure we can't repeatedly do that so public bool is open by default we'll make it false which means that as soon as we press the cancel button we need to say is open equals true and here in the input get button cancel we need to say if input get button down is cancel and so double ampersand is open equals false and save so what this is doing is it's basically saying that if the menu is already open and we are pressing cancel this bit of code will not run so it will only happen the once so let's head back into unity and let's try this out so we shouldn't have that buzzing sound where it's repeatedly trying to play itself okay so one thing i noticed there i'm not entirely sure if that fading was working I think because we already have it there. So let's turn our inv fade off. And let's check this out. There we go. Okay. So, for all, like I say, for all intents and purposes, this works just fine for now. We probably will change a couple of things, but we've got the basics in place. So next tutorial, what we're going to do is we are going to basically freeze our game while we are in the inventory. Um, I'll quickly demonstrate that in a sec. In fact, I'll demonstrate it while I, I talk about uh, the next bit. So yeah, we're basically going to kind of pause the game. Uh, the reason being is even when we are in the inventory, the game is still playing. So if we go to our inventory now and go to our scene view and let's double click on our character. Uh, if I can find him. See, everything is still moving around. So we need to make sure the game is actually paused. So we're going to be doing that. And we're also going to modify this script so we can use the same script to get out of our menu. Um, so that's all coming up in the next tutorial. So until then, guys, see you around.